In this section, we're going to go through the status page for the Linksys WRT160N. We're going to select our router tab. And the router tab, we're going to get general information about the router and the yellow port, which is your internet connection on the router. It's, here is the firmware version. That's the operating system version that's running on the router. This is useful when you're having trouble and you call support and they might ask you what version you have to see if there's a bug with that version. The firmware verification code is basically hash of the operating system and if this number does not match what's given to you by Linksys there could be two things. One is the file is damaged or the file has been tampered with and it should be replaced. The current time is the current time of the system and the internet MAC address, that's the MAC address, the physical address of your outside port. Any, any packets or frames sent to this MAC address will be picked up by the router and processed. The host name is the name, uh, some ISPs might require you to have a host name for this router, uh, this one does not. And the domain name is the domain that this router has joined. The connection type uh, here is automatic con configuration DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocol. So basically that's what it's telling us. This router got this information below automatically from your ISP. It was dynamically configured. The IP address, this is like your phone number of your router. If you had a phone, anybody wants to find you, they send it to this IP and it will get to you. The mask. The mask tells the, the, the router which part is the router is the network and which part is the host of this IP address. The 255s here tell me that this 10.17.16 is a network and the 105 is the host. So this is the host 105 on this network. The default gateway is the address of, a, of your neighbor router and if the router does not know where to send a packet, it will send it to this address. DNS1 and DNS2, these are domain name systems 1 and 2. And anytime you type in an address or a host name, for example, you want to go to yahoo.com. And so that, that yahoo.com needs to be resolved to an IP address so the system can request information from Yahoo. So you type in yahoo.com. Your system sends a, sends a DNS request to the DNS server shown here or here. And this system replies with the IP address of Yahoo. And your system then makes a connection to the Yahoo server. We don't have a DNS server 3 here. We could. And the maximum transmission unit, the MTU, is 1500 bytes. So the biggest frame that this router could use is send out as 1500 bytes. The DHCP lease time is 24 hours. So basically this DHCP information given to you by your ISP needs to be renewed in 24 hours, every 24 hours. Or you can release it and renew it yourself. And the reason you would do that if you're troubleshooting and you're having problems, you might want to release the IP and get a new one. Uh, from your ISP to make sure that you can get IP addresses. And this is for just refreshing this page. The local local network tab. This talks about this is the blue ports on your router, the inside, which is this built-in switch. And there's a MAC address associated with those switch ports. And that's that MAC address. So any 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 frames sent to this MAC address will be picked up by the router and will be processed. The router also has the IP address of 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask again. So the 255.255.255.0 tells me that 192.168.1, which is the first three octets, are the network and this is the first host on that network. Here it's saying that DHCP server is enabled. And that means that this router can give IP addresses and DNS information to your clients connected to the blue ports on the back of the router. 
We are we have three fifty IP addresses which this router can give out. We have a total of two hundred and fifty four addresses that in this subnet mask in this network. So from one to two fifty four and two fifty five is a broadcast and which all hosts on this network will respond to that. So the DHCP client table is the list of clients that have received an IP address from the router. Here we have host HPO8 uh, and it's on the LAN interface. And uh, the IP that was given to it, the MAC of the device and how long this lease is good for. You can sort this by different methods. Since we only have one here, it doesn't really show anything. But if you have multiple ho hosts, you can, if you had wireless or LAN interface, it would change and you could sort them differently. Now the wireless tab gives us information about how the wireless network is set up. Again, this is the wireless MAC address associated to the wireless card on the router. So any packets or frames coming to this uh, MAC address with this MAC address is processed by the router. The mode of this is mixed. So basically it's saying you can have B, G, and N clients on this device. And it, depending on if you have multiple clients or if you have friends coming over, you don't know what they have, you would leave this as mixed. Network name is or SSID. Here we have net1 is our network name. And this is used by devices to connect or associate to this router, wireless router. Channel width, that's how much data you can send at one time. The bandwidth for the wireless is 20 megahertz only in this case. Uh, we can configure this to be 40 megahertz because N can do that. But B and G networks can only work at 20 megahertz widths. Channel one is the, is the channel used by this wireless router. You can have channels 1 through 11, and you can only really use the three of those channels, 1, 6, and 11, because the remaining are overlapping. And we'll get into this in more detail about how to configure the wireless. The security protocol uh, for the wireless encryption is WPA2 personal, and the SSID broadcast is enabled on this device. So basically, the network name net1 is sent out 10 times a second by the wireless router so other wireless devices such as your PDAs and your laptops can find it and associate to it and join it and that covers the status page for the Linksys WRT160N